The Murdoch Children's Research Institute has really led the way with regards to food allergy research. And in fact, internationally, Australian researchers are leading the way with regards to population health guidelines, clinical care, and mechanistic understanding of food allergy. So it's a really exciting area to be in within Australian research. And the Murdoch Children's Research Institute has the largest group of researchers in food allergy in Australia and potentially in the world. Unfortunately, Australia has one of the highest rates of food allergy, which is, appears to be the new epidemic of allergic disease. Asthma is one of the most common uh, forms of allergy, and the problem with asthma is it can be lifelong and it is a chronic condition. But food allergies are obviously worrying for families, and that's one of the earliest forms of allergic disease. There are two types of food allergy, IgE-mediated, the immediate type of food allergy that can cause life-threatening anaphylaxis. And then there are a whole lot of other types of reactions to foods that can cause problems for kids but are not necessarily going to result in death uh, if poorly treated. The most common forms of food allergy that are IgE mediated include what we call the big eight. So that's cow's milk, egg, wheat, soy, peanuts, tree nuts, fish and shellfish. Lily has a, a suspected peanut allergy. We actually went to, a, um, to get her vaccinations and the nut study people um, were there and they were just doing free samples if you wanted to have it. So she came up positive to, to that skin prick test at the vaccination. So we've just avoided peanuts for a couple of years. So there are more main theories for why food allergy appears to be on the rise. We do know it's something to do with the modern lifestyle, but the factors that we're hot on the heels for are the hygiene hypothesis, which is called also microbial diversity, good bugs versus bad bugs. The second one is vitamin D and keeping a healthy amount of the sunshine vitamin uh, at the right level. The third one is infant feeding and the way that we introduce solids and allergenic foods into an infant's diet. And the fourth one is the skin barrier and genetics and whether uh, you're at risk of developing food allergy through sensitisation and broken down skin. I have peanut butter at home and my son has peanut butter. Um, Lily just knows she's not allowed to have it. And so the whole family have just told her that she can't have it and my son makes sure she doesn't have it and she's very good with that, yeah. So in the past, I think there was a lot of confusion about what should happen with regards to children with food allergy. And now it's all very carefully outlined in guidelines and uh, government um, regulation regarding uh, avoidance of the allergen and how to manage children with food allergies. There's now um, banning of certain products in kindergartens and childcare, uh, but when children reach school age, because we can't ban foods completely from an environment, it's recommended that there's allergen minimisation. So what's recommended is that children do not share food in the school environment because that's the safest way uh, for, for children to avoid sharing foods they don't know if they're allergic to. And it's also a nice, easy thing that the school can implement for the whole school community and we don't get this mixed message about whether a child can bring a food, certain food to the school or not. The School Nut Study is looking at 10,000 kids in schools and it's been very interesting because some children have been uh, thought to have food allergy for many years, have grown out of their food allergy. So some children we're able to give them a new diagnosis um, and some children unfortunately still need to avoid the food that they've uh, been avoiding all these years but because they are now old enough to start to manage the condition themselves we can help educate them about what it is we're worried about, how to be sensible in their approach and how to best manage an allergic reaction should it occur. Our research is really making a difference both to the patients that we see in our own Department of Allergy Clinic but also the guidelines uh, for uh, children's care within schools, the infant feeding guidelines and the way that we care for kids um, at the general population level. So it's a really exciting time for us uh, researching food allergy because the way that we care for kids is actually changing based on the research that we're generating ourselves.